Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today you'll be joining me for my April wrap up. Oh, I read a lot of books this month. A lot. So many pages were consumed, let me tell you. If you've been watching my videos this month, you'll have seen that I actually participated in two separate readathons and I'm putting that down to the reason why I read so many books. Also, coronavirus. But anyway, this video is already going to be long enough. So basically what I'm going to do, I'm going to run through very, very quickly all the books I read and also for the books that I read for readathons, which is the majority of them, I'm going to link my reading vlogs up above when we come to those books. So here's what April looked like in my bullet journal. It doesn't usually look this crowded. Let me show you what last month looked like just to give you an idea. So this was last month. This looks beautiful. I can even write how many books I wrote down the bottom. The spines are all nice. I didn't actually fill in all the books because I only read seven books versus this month. What is this? I ran out of room because there were just so many. So how many books did I actually read? Uh, 14. I thought I only read about 10, but I read 14 books in April. Okay, so let's get right into it. How I'm going to structure this is I'm going to tell you the three books that I read that weren't part of any readathons first, and then we're going to move on to my hours reading material, and then also the reading Russian reading material. So the first book that I finished in the month of April was White Acre by Philippa Gregory. This book is a historical fiction novel set, I forget when, it was a long time ago that I finished this now that I'm looking back on it, in like the 1600s I want to say. Either way, it's a historical fiction novel, it's the first ever novel that Philippa Gregory ever wrote and you can sort of tell. In this one we follow the main character Beatrice who is part of a noble family. Her father is the Lord of Whiteacre, hence the name of the book, and she loves her family home. She loves Whiteacre. She doesn't want to part with it and she's willing to do some questionable shit to be able to stay there. I should also mention that I listened to this one via the audiobook and at times the audiobook felt like it was going for a very long time. I think that might be because it was actually 23 hours long or something like that, but the narrator was very, very good and that is what kept me reading it. The main character in this frustrated me a lot so I will say I think I ended up giving it a three and a half stars. Nope, a three stars. Just because there was a lot going on in this novel and the main character was an unlikable main character and she isn't about that self-redemption. So I don't know, it definitely reads like a first novel. There's so much potential. The writing is still beautiful, but I think Philippa Gregory just learnt to refine a few things and to draw back at certain things. And she's an incredible writer. And if this is the thing that kicked that all off, then I don't completely hate it but I don't know if I will be continuing on with the series. Next up, I read Chosen Ones by Veronica Roth. This has its own reading vlog for, which I'll leave linked up there, as well as its own book babble, because I just think that if you like Veronica Roth, you need to pick up this book. This is my favorite out of all her novels now, and that is because it is more mature than her other ones. And also I really like the subject matter that was discussed in this. It interests me a lot. If you haven't heard of Chosen Ones, in this one we follow a group of characters who have defeated the Dark One in their world and this is following the events of that 10 years after and how it messed them up a lot. They survived but did they really survive intact? That sort of thing. There are really good discussions in this on PTSD, anxiety, coping mechanisms. It also had a discussion on what do you do once you defeat the big bad? Can you go back to being who you were before? Can you not? What's the deal? And all of that. So because I've already talked extensively on this one, I'll leave my book babble just linked up there for you as well as down below and you can go check that out if you want to know more. This one got four stars from me. And then the last book I read just because was sort of influenced by the Hours Readathon, but it wasn't for any prompts for it, and that was Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. I actually listened to this one for the first time via audiobook, and I didn't mind it. Stephen Fry as the narrator just made it feel so nostalgic and listening to him putting on all the different voices for all the different characters was also entertaining. I don't know what to say, it's Harry Potter. I gave it five stars off the bat because all the nostalgic feels, I love it. It's always going to be one of my favorites. It's Harry Potter. It's amazing. Okay, then I read seven books for the Hours Readathon. I split my experience up into two different vlogs, so let's just go ahead and pop the first one up here. In no particular order, I read 
Seafire by Natalie C. Parker. This book is about a group of strong girls who are on a ship and their captain Caledonia who is the main character is discovering what it is to be a leader and sacrifices and all of that stuff as they take on the bad guys on the sea. I didn't love it 100%. I gave it a three stars. It wasn't terrible. There was nothing in here that was bad but I just feel like this story has been done a lot. This book came out when all of the high seas adventure type novels were taking place. You had Daughter of the Pirate King, you had Song of the Current, you had Sea Witch. There were so many stories coming out at this time that had elements of this in it somewhere and after reading all of those I don't know if those stories just got to me first but now reading this one it doesn't feel original enough for me. I also felt like the world building in this was a bit confused with itself. Like they're talking about a ship that has like thrusters and that sort of thing but it still has sails so I'm picturing this weird hybrid between like Pirates of the Caribbean ships and then some treasure planet thing. I don't know it was just a lot but I think it could have been explained a bit better, but it was sort of, you're left to your own devices. Like I said, not a bad book. There was a really cool part in here actually that read about when we get called girl, which I get a lot still as well. Like I, I know that I am a girl, surprise. I'm 25 years old now. It's getting a little bit old. So I will just share that part with you because it really resonated with me. So there's a character that says to the main one, there are no children anymore, just babes and the rest of us. Remember, when they call you girl, they're trying to tell you something. They're trying to tell you that they're more than you, that the body you're in makes you less. But you know, and I know, that you're exactly what you're meant to be. So that part saved this book for me. But yeah, it got three stars. It wasn't anything too remarkable. If you like high seas adventure, try this one for sure because it has everything that all those other books had. I read Permanent Record by Mary H.K. Choi. I loved her first novel, Emergency Contact, but I had heard mixed reviews about this one and this is her second novel, so I was still keen to try it out. And before I tell you what the book's about, I can understand the criticisms this one is getting. So in this book we follow the main character Pablo who is a college dropout, he's got credit card debt, he is an anxious little bean and he sort of gets swept off his feet and thrown into another world when he meets Lee. Lee is a gigantic pop star, huge figure in the world and they go on this whirlwind sort of adventure and it's about him trying to deal with his own shit while also experiencing this whole other side to life. I will say when I first started this book, I didn't like the main character whatsoever. Just no. The tone of this one was so different to my previous read that it just grated against me. It sounded like it was trying to be so hip and it just, mm, it hurt to read those first couple of chapters, but then I got into the story and I ended up finishing this one in, I want to say two days. It was very, very quick, even though it's like, over 400 pages long. This book did a really good job of balancing the two different characters and seeing things from both sides. So I will give it credit for that. But again, the main character was annoying. Not because he was dealing with his anxiety and things like that, but more because he wasn't. He wasn't dealing with anything. He was completely ignoring things. That just grated against my nerves a little bit. But I do think that Pablo is a valid main character. He just... He has some annoying qualities. So did I like this as much as her first novel? No. I think I got along with the characters from her first novel more. I loved Penny and I loved, what's his name? The main character dude, Sam? Sam. I loved those main characters. In this one, because I didn't love her main character straight off the bat, it hindered my reading experience a little bit. So this one ended up getting three and a half stars from me. I still love Mary H. Gay Troy as an author and I will definitely be picking up all her books in the future. I just think that I will enjoy other characters more than these two. I also branched out a bit and read The Turn of Key by Ruth Ware. This is a thriller novel set in a smart home in Scotland I think. We follow Rowan who is a nanny and she takes on this job which sounds too good to be true and surprise surprise that is the case. Then suddenly there is a 
dead child and she's in prison and she is writing to a solicitor or someone telling them her whole story and how she didn't do it. All those things are on the back of the blurb so those weren't any spoilers but yeah this book I ended up really loving. It actually freaked the shit out of me a few times there which you can see in my vlog and it had those spooky vibes and it was great. I will say the second to last twist towards the end had me rolling my eyes a little bit but then the overall last big thing last page I sat back and I was like holy shit I understand now that is amazing so this book gets the award for best ending because wow and I ended up giving this one four stars then we had a book that actually surprised me by how much I enjoyed it and that was Clockwork Angel by Cassandra Clare this is part of the Shadowhunters universe I read the Mortal Instruments years ago and they took me a few books to get into them and then I smash read the last ones but I had some problems with the series. Anyway, so I bought this book two years ago. I still have the receipt. It was like actually in April two years ago that I bought this and I finally picked it up. Thank you Owls for making me read this finally because I ended up really enjoying it. I don't know if it's because I've just been on a bit of a historical fiction kick at the moment and the setting of this is Victorian London or that we were following different main characters that didn't piss me off as much as Clary and Jace did in The Mortal Instruments. So in this one we follow Tessa Gray who travels to London after an invitation from her brother arrives to her in New York and it's basically her discovering the downworld and shadow hunters and all of that, how that all exists and also a really good plot. There's also Will Herondale in this one and Jem Carstairs and now I understand all the fan art so that's also good. I'm gonna be that person that says I like Jem and not Will because Will was rude in parts where it just wasn't warranted. I know that's part of his character and all of that, but I sort of clashed a bit with Will. On the other hand, Jem was this soft cinnamon boy who just was dealing with some shit, but didn't let that affect his character. He was trying to move on, move forward, still live his life and not complain while it seemed like Will was just complaining for the hell of it at points. So yeah, I'm definitely Team Gem with this one. Tessa as a main character as well didn't mind better than Clary so there's that. And this one surprisingly got four stars from me so it was a very pleasant surprise. I'm already puffed and I have more books. So many more books to talk about. Speaking of my historical fiction binge I also read The Lady of the Rivers by Philippa Gregory. This is set in 1435 and follows our main character Jaquetta who is royalty in England around that time. It starts off with her marrying the Duke of Bedford and her marriage with him and then her second marriage and her life after that. There's also a touch of witchcraft sort of element in this one. I should say more of a mythological element to this because the main character claims descendancy from the Lady of the Lake type figure. And overall, not my favourite Philippa Gregory. I felt like this did lag in certain points, but I still enjoyed it and it was interesting to see the founder of this house. Like she had something like 14 kids or whatever and one of her descendants would end up sitting on the throne of England. So very interesting historical element in this one. And this one ended up getting three and a half stars from me. If my explanations are getting a little bit vague it's because these books were consumed towards like the start of the month and my brain is a sieve. Next up I read Heartstopper Volume 1 by Alice Oseman. This is that really cute comic that everyone is talking about where boy meets boy, boys fall in love, that sort of thing. And I really loved it too. As I said, it is a comic. So I flew through this one. It was a perfect pick for the readathon and it was just all sorts of heartfelt goodness. There's a lot crammed into this comic as well. You've got like discussions on coming out, homophobia, that sort of thing. There's a lot in this. And I just remember reading it and getting goosebumps because of how much it got into my heart. There's a reason why everyone loves this and oh man, if a comic can speak to me like this, I really want to see what her other novels can do to me. And this actually got five stars from me. So I think this is the highest rated thing that I read all month and there's a reason why that. It's beautiful. And the last book that I read for hours, we finally got there, was Cracked Up To Be by Courtney Summers. This is Courtney Summers' first ever published novel, which I didn't realize until I read this handy little, where is it, introduction at the start of the novel, which just explains where Courtney Summers 
characters get it from, if that makes sense. So in this one, we follow Parker, who was perfect and popular and now she is not. And it's basically her downward spiral into just the pits. Like with Courtney Summers' other novel, Sadie, this has a very raw heart to the story. In this one, something terrible has happened and it's Parker's fault and it's her dealing with this open wound that she just can't close over. And man, it had me feeling all sorts of messed up, but in a good way. So yes, this is a hard-hitting contemporary and I just love Courtney Summers and the stories that she tells and the really needed things that she talks about. So trigger warnings for this, as with Sadie, there's there's some stuff in this, let me tell you. So just be aware of that going into it. You can sort of tell that this was her first published work, but at the same time, it was also really well done. And what can I say? I love this author so much. So yeah, I've found my author that I would turn to for hard hitting contemporaries. She just always knocks it out of the park. And this one got four stars from me. So those are all the books that I read for Owl's Readathon. I can see them stacking up right next to me. And that stack is looking huge. And the last four books that I'll be talking about are the ones that I read for the mini edition Stay at Home Reading Rush Readathon, which I'll just go ahead and link up here for you. And the first one that I have is Amulet number three, The Cloud Searches by Kazu Kiwishi. And this was the perfect pick for this readathon. If you've watched my vlog, you'll know that my turning point in the readathon was with this graphic novel. And that's just because I enjoy these so very, very much. Again, the art style is amazing. I love the shifting color tones throughout as the mood shifts. It's just gorgeous. It's a fun, adventure filled story it doesn't get too deep so because this is the third one in the series i can't tell you too much about it basically they're on a mission and they get some unexpected help i'll leave it at that so i ended up giving this one a three and a half slash four star it was just what i needed at the time and i'm really glad i picked it up i also read evermore by sarah holland and this was probably my most disappointing read i really loved the first book in this duology which was Everless, the first book is basically that movie in time with Justin Timberlake. It's that, but with fantasy elements in it. And I loved it. It was great. This one, however, just felt like the author was jumping from plot point to plot point and it was the bare scaffolding of a story with the feelings not really there. It felt rushed and the main character made weird choices I didn't agree with and the story just the pacing was all off it was a bit of a mess to be honest but like I said I really enjoyed the first one and I know that this author has another book that's just been released I think it's Havenfall I've been seeing it around a little bit and I'm still keen to read that I want to see what else she can do and because from memory I did like the first book in this one I still have faith in this author but there were just a few things in this that I was reading and rolling my eyes at. I still gave it three stars, but I was just left feeling underwhelmed. And then I read English Fairy Tales and Legends. This is a book full of fairy tales that I picked up back in 2013, I think. It was everything I needed for the Stay Home Reading Rush Readathon. I chose it for the prompt to make me smile because I thought all the nostalgic feels would just get me. And hey, it did. I also found this book to be a really good potential source material. It has towards the back a section that is labelled notes and sources where the author actually lets you know where she pulled the stories from, what the original influences for the stories were and pulled apart all of that information a bit more. So all in all I really love the concept of this book. I love that we've got the tales as well as the bits behind the scenes and I loved it. It ended up getting four stars. Whew, one more book. We can do this. So the final book that I have to talk about was The Gravity of Us by Phil Stamper. This is a YA contemporary book where the main character, Cal, is a self-proclaimed journalist. He's 17 years old and he has a really big online presence and an online following and he has to uproot all of that and move to Houston with his parents because his dad is selected for a potential NASA trip to Mars. This book also features a male-male romance and I really loved that about it. I will say however that this did have insta-love in it and I felt like at times the main character was super intense for the love interest but all in all I did end up liking them sort of finding their feet together. This was a very readable contemporary but I think the problem I had with it was that the two main themes slash things driving the plot forward are not things that I'm interested in. The first one of those things being sort of 
this NASA experience type thing. I don't mind sci-fi and things like that, but I like when it's sort of off world. While I still enjoyed reading it, it just wasn't a driving thing for me in this book. And the other one was the journalism element. Now, multiple times throughout this story, Cal states that he is already a journalist. He already counts himself as a journalist, even though he doesn't have the degree or anything like that. And his experience is based on his own online presence and that sort of thing. So he hasn't worked for any news corporations or papers or anything like that. It's all just been his own experience. And I had a bit of an issue with that because while he is interested in certain things and he is putting the time in to flesh out stories, I still think you need that extra experience to label yourself as that. People are probably going to disagree, but it just felt like he wasn't quite there yet. Another thing that influenced my opinion on that as well is my first year of uni, I actually studied journalism and I didn't like it. So when I say I don't like journalism, it's not journalists as such or any of that sort of thing. It's just the studying of journalism in itself didn't interest me whatsoever. I much more preferred the creative element to my degree and the creative writing venture. Not saying that journalism is wrong or anything like that. It's just it wasn't suited to me. So I think that's why... I didn't really vibe with this story. All in all though, not a bad book, still enjoyed it. I reckon this author is going to be one to watch for his easy to read contemporary style. He also addresses some really good points in this like depression and coping with that and how one handles that. And I really enjoyed that element. So that part of the story did pull it through for me. This one ended up getting three stars from me. So yeah, those are the 14 books that I read in the month of April. That's double what I usually read. So I am both shocked and pleasantly surprised at myself. For most of this month, I wore trackies nearly every day and I read every single day. I think a lot of people are trying to find ways to escape at the moment and that's how I dealt with things. So thank you so much for watching. I wanna know in the comments down below your favorite book of the month as well as your least favorite book of the month and we'll chat more there. So having said that, I will see you in my next one. Bye. Mm -hmm.